Hello everyone and welcome back to Algebra 1 with Miss Betsy. Today what we're going to be discussing is how you add integers. This is going to be the video for section 1.3 in your text. The text that I'm using is the second edition of Algebra 1 for Christian Schools. It's published by Bob Jones University Press. As I said at the beginning of all of my videos, doesn't matter what text you're using, you can learn about adding integers just by watching my videos, but if you're trying to follow, um, follow along in a text with my teaching, you have to have the second edition of Algebra 1. It's not compatible with the third edition. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we welcome your presence with us today. Lord, we stand in awe of you and of who you are. I thank you that you love us, and I thank you that you have given to us the ability to uh, understand a little bit of the world that you've created around us. Father, help me to speak clearly today and to communicate with my students. Help them to understand the material and to be able to apply it to their lives. Thank you for your presence again with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you know that there's going to be a lame joke, so the lame joke today is, or lame riddle, what do you call a pig that knows karate? Well, you would call him a pork chop. So yes, I know that was pretty bad. Actually, I quite like that, you know, pork chop. So today what we're going to be talking about is how we add integers, and you will remember that integers are considered to be the set of whole numbers and their opposites. So what are whole numbers? Well, whole numbers would be the natural numbers or our counting numbers, like we naturally learned how to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, however high you wish to count. When you add a zero to that group of numbers, the natural numbers, you have the whole numbers. You have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so forth. When we expand the group of numbers and call that the integers, what we're doing is we're adding the opposites of those numbers. Last time we talked about what a number line was and we used a number line to show opposites. And we learned that in the opposite of a number was the, court, was the number that was the same distance from zero on the number line. We learned that the space going from zero to one is one unit, from one to two is a second unit. So you count units from zero. So let's say that we want to know what the opposite of three is. We've graphed three on the number line. That dot is the coordinate of that number. So how far is three? From zero on the number line, you have one unit, two, three. So three is three units to the right of zero on the number line. Now if we say that the opposite of a number is the same number of units in the opposite direction from zero, one, two, three, we end up with negative 3, which is 3 units to the left of 0 on the number line. So that's how we come up with the definition of what integers are. Integers are whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they're opposites. 0 doesn't have an opposite. The opposite of 1, negative 1. The opposite of 2, negative 2. The opposite of 3, negative 3. This 0 is like the balancing point on a seesaw. And I'll use that illustration a lot as we're, talking, as we're teaching math here. As long as you are the same number of units from 0, that's the opposite of that number. So, you might think of the opposite of 3 as being negative 3, but what if we wanted to know what the opposite of negative 4 was? What's the opposite of negative 4? Well, this is two units to the left of zero. A positive two is two units to the right of zero. So you can use a negative sign to indicate the opposite. This would be read the opposite 
of a negative 2 is equal to a positive 2. So, so these are the numbers that we're talking about when we define integers. We also use a concept, you know, introduce the word, called absolute value. And absolute value is something that we're going to be using when we're adding integers as well. Once again, we have, let me draw this number line here that I'm going to use in a moment. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's really messy when you're drawing number lines. I want your number line to be much neater than that. Negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When you draw a number line for me on your homework, use a ruler, make nice evenly spaced uh, hash marks on your number line, and remember to put the arrowhead at each end of your number line because that in indicates that this pattern continues forever in the negative direction, forever to the right in the positive direction, and remember that the smaller, but the further to the left on the number line that a number is, the smaller that number is. So, we talked about absolute value, and we learned that absolute value is the distance from zero. So if we want to know what the absolute value of five is, we also learned that absolute value was indicated with these two vertical bars. So if we had something that looked like this, like a 5 in between two poles, this is read the absolute value of 5. And when you figure out what the absolute value of 5 is, what that's saying is how far is positive 5 from 0? How many units from 0 is that on the number line? And notice I said positive 5. If there's not a plus in front of it, if there's no sign in front of the number, you know that it's positive. Well, we start at zero, obviously, one, two, three, four, five. The absolute value of a positive five is five. Well, what are we going to do if we want to know what the absolute value of one, two, three, four, five? Absolute value of a negative five is. What is it asking when it talks about the absolute value of a negative number? It's asking how far from zero on the number line is a negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It also is a positive 5. So what you see here is the absolute value is always positive. And why is it that absolute value is always positive? It's always positive because distance, you never go a negative distance. You never get those miles to go off of your odometer. Unless you run backwards, but it's not legitimate. You know what I'm talking about. You can't say, oh, I hiked a negative 10 miles today. No, you hiked 10 miles. It doesn't matter if you went north, south, east, or west. You still went a positive number. Now, why did I review this idea of absolute value? I did this because there is in your text and in any math text there's going to be a technical mathematical definition of what it is that you do to add integers together or how you add signed numbers and i used to try to teach this all the time and get real technical about it but as soon as i start doing that you know your eyes glaze over or you roll back in the back your eyes roll back in the back of your head and you shut me out because it's not meaningful to you what I want you to do is get in your book, read it, do your best to understand it, but I'm going to show you the actual real life way that you are going to deal with adding integers. Okay, I erase that number line again. As I am in the midst of telling you 
how you add integers together in real life. One, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let me go ahead and illustrate how you add signed numbers on the number line. So we have negative five, negative three, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. This is just a piece of, a, of our number line. Before I illustrate this with the number line, let me tell you in the real world how you're going to add signed numbers. Same signs. And you'll want to take notes right here. Because this is the process that you're going to use. Add the numbers. Keep the sign. Now I'm putting a disclaimer in here for all of you people who might be watching this who, who have math degrees or understand the theory behind it. For those moms out there of mine, like I know for, sure, for a fact I have at least one mom who's taken college algebra. No, this is not tech, I'm not technically correct in the terminology that I'm using here. And I will work really hard to teach the vocabulary to our kids and be specific about, my, about the language of math. But this is real life edition of positive and negative numbers, and it tends to trip up our kids, and I want to make it uh, a meaningful, use, uh, usable definition to them. So when you're adding signed numbers, you can either have the same signs or you can have different signs, and you're going to approach those differently. We're going to subtract, and then we're going to use the larger, in quotes, use the larger sign. And let me illustrate this, what I mean here, on the number line. Because you can use a number line to add numbers. Now, it's extremely slow and cumbersome, and you don't want to do it. But remember, with our first video, we said sometimes having a graph or a number line helps us to have a visual picture of what's going on. So let's say, what are we going to do if we have a, make sure, yeah, a positive 2 plus a positive 4. We want to know what that is. And of course, everybody knows 2 plus 4 is 6. How do we show that on the number line? Plus 2 begins at 0, goes 2 units to the right on the number line. So this right here, that distance there, you've moved 2 units to the right because you're moving in the positive direction. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to plus, we're going to, we're going to add, in that positive direction, four more units. I am so sorry about that squeak. So if I go four more units to the right, one, two, three, four. I go four units to the right on the number line, from two to three is one, two, three, four. I end up with a positive 6. Now, obviously that's true, but I wanted to show you the picture of it. If we're going to use our real life rule, what do we do? It says, what if we're going to do for adding integers? These are our rules to add integers. You have two choices. Either your signs are going to be the same, or your signs are going to be different. The one that we did here first was 2 plus 4. We're going to add those numbers. We're ignoring the signs. 2 plus 4 is 6. And we're going to keep whatever sign it is. It's a positive sign. We don't have to put a positive sign in front of that 6 because it said that we understand that if there's no sign in front of a number, that it's positive. So, 
2 plus 4 is 6. And you're saying, why in the world are you taking all of this time? Because I'm a math person, I can't help but at least give you a little bit of the theory behind it. It's my responsibility. So, let's go ahead and do another one. Let's see what happens if we're going to add together two negative numbers. For example, what if we have negative 1 plus a negative 3. Let's go ahead and show this on the number line. Negative 1, we start at 0, we move 1 unit to the left on the number line. We're going to add to that, combine with that, another 3 units to the left on the number line. Negative 3 means we're going to start where we ended up here. We're going to go 1 unit, 2 unit, 3 units to the left on the number line. So we've gone one unit to the left. We've gone three units to the left on the number line. What number did we add up at? What's the location we ended up at? Right here, a negative four. Some of you already know how to add negative numbers. I hope this is a review for the vast majority of you. Negative 1 plus a negative 3 is a negative 4. I've given you a picture of this in a manner that should make sense to you. Now, let's go ahead and see my little real world example here. How are we going to add integers? These are integers, they're signed numbers. They're the opposite of 1 plus the opposite of 3. What does my rule say? It says, add the numbers. Now you're ignoring the numbers. Ignoring the signs, rather. So you have 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Okay? What's the next part? Keep the sign. We're adding a negative 1 plus a negative 3. I'm going to erase this here to show you a little bit more clearly. We have a negative 1 plus a negative 3. We're going to add the numbers. Ignore the signs. 1 plus 3 is 4. Are we going to use a positive or a negative sign? We're going to make this to be a negative because that's the sign that's used. Negative 1 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 4. This is something that's a little bit harder for me to write on the board, but it makes sense. Let's say I have negative 3 plus a negative 10. The signs are the same. It's going to say 3 plus 10 is 13. Because they were negatives, it's going to be a negative 13. Negative 7 plus a negative 2. 7 plus 2 is 9. Because they're negative, both signs were negative. Negative 7 plus negative 2 is a negative 9. Very, very straightforward. This one right here is where we have a little bit of a difference. And that's what, what's going to happen when we're adding positives and negatives together. So let's look at an example on the number line again. Say, how about positive 3? plus a negative 4. Positive 3 plus a negative 4. What are we going to do there? Let's go back to our number line. We're going to start at 0. First, this says go 3 units to the right in the positive direction. And we end up at 3. Obviously, that's where we graph 3 on the number line. Now it says move four units to the left on the number line. So if we went three units this way, we know going back here to zero is going to be three units. One more unit to the left takes us to a negative one on the number line. 
all we've done is we've shown that first we're moving three units in the positive direction, then we're moving four units in the negative direction. We end up with a negative one. Positive three plus a negative four is a negative one, not a negative four as I'm getting ready to write. If you take three steps forward and four steps back, one, two, three, four, where are you? You're one step behind where you started. That's all we're doing when we're adding negative numbers. Now, what does my real world rule here say? It says if you have different signs that you're adding together, we do. We have a positive and a negative. What we're going to do is subtract. Well, how do I know what to subtract? I'm going to subtract the little number from the big number. So I'm going to say 4 minus 3. Use the larger sign, and this is where this is really not technically correct, so don't hold me on the technicalities here. But if we ignore the signs in front of these numbers, if we ignore the fact that we have a positive 3 and a negative 4, force bigger number. What signs in front of that? It's the negative. So you've ended up with a negative 1. All I'm doing right here is writing out the steps that I've followed. We're going to subtract the smaller number from the larger number to get a 1. We're going to use the sign that's in front of this larger number here, which is a negative 1. Now, I'm going to go ahead and erase that because for those of you who understand math, 4 minus 3 is clearly not a negative 1. But let's go ahead and do a, another example. Negative 4 plus 2. How are we going to know what negative 4 plus 2 is equal to? Well, I'm going to tell you that that answer is a negative 2. And I'm going to figure that out using my real world example here. I'm going to ignore the signs. I'm going to say 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. The negative sign is in front of the large number. I'm sorry, 4 minus 2 is a positive 2. But I'm going to use the negative sign because that sign in front of the larger number is negative. So negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2. Let's see if that's what we actually get on the number line. We start here at 0, and we move 4 units to the left on the number line. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're at negative 4. Now what are we going to do next? We're adding 2, which means we go 2 units to the right. 1, 2. Where do we end up? Right here at negative 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2. Okay. Play around with those. I think that you will have no difficulty with them, provided you take the time to say, oh, hey, I know what to do. Okay, if I have negative 6 plus a, neg plus a negative 4. The signs are the same. What am I going to do? Add the technical definition together is that you add the, op the opposite values, okay? So you add these numbers together, 6 plus 4 is 10, and you keep whatever the sign is that's used. So negative 6 plus a negative 4 is a negative 10. Obviously, you know, positive 6, positive 4 is a positive 10. Now, if we have opposite signs, again, the technical definition would involve absolute value, which is distance from zero. What you're actually doing, ignore the signs. 6 minus 4 is 2. It's going to be negative because the negative sign is in front of the 6. It's in front of the number that has the largest absolute value is what it actually is. Negative 6 plus 4. In your book for this section, they might put negative 6 plus a positive 4. That's just to reinforce to you that if there is no sign in front of the number, that it is positive. 
6 minus 4 is 2. We use the negative sign because it's in front of the 6. So let's reverse the signs on these. 6 plus a negative 4. We're going to use the same process. 6 minus 4 is 2, but the sign is in front of the 6. You don't see it, but you know that it's positive. So 6 plus a negative 4 is a positive 2. I uh, will refer very briefly. Some of you may have learned uh, that subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. And we're not going to get into that now because we've got some, with these opposite signs, we're going to deal with adding the opposite. So just file that away in the recesses of your mind for the moment. Not too far back, but just has nothing to do with the topic at hand today. Last thing that we need to talk about briefly in this video is mathematical properties. This is a definition that you need to know. Mathematical properties are statements that are true. I'm going to put M, P. Mathematical properties, these are statements that are true for any value of the variable. And now you just have to wait while I write this down. Statements that are true for every value of the, var of the variable. Every value of the variable. And sometimes some of these mathematical properties are going to be called identities as well. Identities. You should be familiar with the vast majority of these. First one we're going to talk about is the commutative. It's not commutative, it's commutative. The commutative property of addition. Now who knew that you're going to have English vocabulary in math? But you do. You have to know the commutative property of addition. And you should also learn how to spell commutative. And what that tells us is that order doesn't matter when you add numbers together. The numbers that you're adding here, anybody remember what those are called? The things that you add together, those are called add-ins. More vocabulary. What are add-ins? Add-ins are the words, I'm sorry, add-ins are the numbers that are added together in a problem. And what is the answer to an addition problem called? That's called a sum, not S-O-M-E, but S-U-M. The commutative property of addition tells us that when we add two numbers together, the order doesn't matter. And if we're going to use algebra language for this, where we're using variables, we're going to say that the commutative property tells us that A plus B is the same as B plus A doesn't matter what values you put in there. 7 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 7. 9,200,000 plus 1 is the same as 1 plus 9,200,000. This is a commutative property. It tells us that A plus B is the same as B plus A, which tells us that order does not matter. It doesn't make a difference when we are adding together two numbers. And remember, mathematical properties are statements that are true for every value of the variable. We've done the commutative property, which is a plus b is equal to b plus a, which tells us that it doesn't matter what order you add numbers together. And now we have the so. Okay, I can't believe I'm not spelling it. Associative associative property. 
of addition. We're not talking about subtraction. This is of addition only. This also applies to multiplication. But we're just talking about addition right now. And what that tells us is that the way in which we group numbers together when we are adding them does not change the end result. What if we have 2 plus the quantity 3 plus 4? You notice I said 2 plus the quantity 3 plus 4. That's how I'm going to pronounce those um, parentheses. Order of operation says do what's in the parentheses first. 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. We've used grouping symbols here. What would happen if we put those parentheses in a different place? Are we still going to get the same answer? You work what's inside the parentheses first, and you end up with 5 plus 9. So our second step here is different. See those two steps there, 2 plus 7, 5 plus 4, they look different. But you're, there, there's a very strange looking, looking face. Your answer is the same. So what did we learn from that? Well, we learn from the associative property of addition that order does not change the value of your solution. In an algebra language, it looks like this. A plus the quantity, A plus the quantity, B plus C, is the same as the quantity, A plus B plus C. This is something you have to know and understand, and you're thinking, why in the world do I have to learn such a bunch of gobbledygook? Because the commutative property and the associative property are key foundational things that you will use without even thinking about them all of the time as you progress on in algebra. Then there are two more properties that we talk about, and these are called, at least one of them is called an identity. What am I having? We have the additive identity. And what this tells us is that if you add identity, this tells us that if you add zero, to any number. I started with 7, I added 0. Or, if you add a number to 0, your result is simply going to be the original number. Adding 0 to something doesn't change its value. If you have no money in your pocket and I say, hey, here's $0 for you, I know you're going to say, yay, thank you, Miss Betsy, I'm so blessed. Well, no, because I didn't give you anything. It didn't change what you started out with. In the language of algebra, that tells us that any number a plus 0 is just that same number. Or if we, if we start with 0 and we add a to it, add any number to it, there's no change. This is what we call the additive identity property. And zero itself is the additive identity number. If we want to keep this, the identity of the number, just add zero to it. It doesn't change its value. We have one final property that we're going to talk about. And this is called the additive inverse. the additive inverse property. And this tells us that the sum of a number, the sum of a number and its opposite, what is the opposite of 7? It's a negative 7. The sum of a number and its opposite is always equal to 0. And why is that true? Remember back our definition of opposites? Opposites are the same distance from zero on the number line. We start here at zero, we go to a positive seven, 
Then we, then we move back seven units in the negative direction. You're right there at zero where you started. So the additive inverse tells us that the sum of a number and its inverse, or and its opposite, sum of a number and its opposite is always zero. In the language of algebra, we say that a plus the opposite of a is equal to zero. It doesn't matter what number you pick. 1,000 plus the opposite of 1,000, which is a negative 1,000. 1,000 plus a negative 1,000, it's always going to be equal to zero. And I called this uh, a plus the opposite of a. Additive inverse and opposite mean the same thing in practice. So go ahead and complete your work for section 1.3. Come to class with any questions and we'll work through any difficulties you have. And I'll see you next time.